Gareth, what role do you think that businesses have to care about environmental issues today? Like, surely the economy is what, and the shareholders are what businesses should care about most. It's the only thing that businesses should care about, right? I mean, you know, the invisible hand of the market will sort out the ocean, sort out the atmosphere, and so on and so forth. I, I think we've seen some interesting things recently, right? We've seen this... I don't know who it is, the stakeholder group of US CEOs coming back and saying for the first time uh, that our purpose extends beyond shareholder creating shareholder value. And in fact, um, you know, that should that shouldn't be our primary motive. Now that's great that that conversation is starting to be had. Uh, the fear is that not enough will happen to make sure that enough happens in time for all of the really bad things not to happen. Uh, but nevertheless, it's good that the conversation is starting to happen. Um, I think we are, you see these ebbs and flows, right? Of, uh, are we in the business of building long term sustainable organizations all the way through to, are we chasing up some we work style insanity to try and get to an IPO at a higher, as high a valuation as possible before anybody works out that this whole thing is a massive Ponzi scheme. Um, so I hope that we are at the low point of that particular one. And I think this WeWork IPO car crash is absolutely brilliant for just showing all of the excess and the hubris and the nonsense behind some of those valuations and that chase for growth. Um, so I'm hoping that we're getting ready for a bit of a pendulum swing back. If you kind of think about those innovative um, Silicon Valley companies from the 50s and 60s, so the sort of... Uh, the Xeroxes and the Hewlett Packards of that area, you know, they were around these um, very almost like Japanese concepts of uh, type Z management. So not just we're assuming that people are coming to work fundamentally motivated and keen to make an impact, but that, you know, the best, most valuable relationships between employers and employees are, are, are really long-term ones where, you know, the employer is taking on some responsibility for, for helping to support the long-term interests of that employee and that's rewarded back for loyalty. So that's one place in which stakeholder stuff gets a lot, lot, lot more long-term than just chasing quarterly value. I think that the next bridge is how do we tie that into sustainable sustainability and to sustainable operations? When we're seeing, like if our activity is, gener let's say our activity now is generating a lot, is quite carbon intensive, at the moment, there is no organization, there's no carbon intensive organization that's paying its dues. Okay. So, you know, the risk is being taken by the environment and society and the benefit is being accrued by us. And some stuff that was even reading this morning when we were talking, where people were talking about um, either tariffs or higher tax on frequent flyers. So something like 50% of all of the air miles are conducted by 1% of the flyers. So, you know, you're going you're gonna to realize you have to start hitting in some of those places. And if that, it, and if, if what ends up happening is that we do actually normalize everything back down to the economic. But what we're saying is that the, you know, the cost of having a, an environmentally unsustainable approach is that it might make your business not financially viable. That might be one of the few ways that we can actually rapidly make some inroads into some of the more substantial changes that we have to say. But I don't think that we can, I think we've seen that you cannot operate in the long term with impunity and not recognizing the long term downstream consequences of your actions. You can't just consume and grow and leave this trail of devastation and carnage behind you, not, you know, not sustainably. And, and, uh, and what's interesting is, you know, particularly with the Extinction Rebellion stuff and the, the, that, that force that's coming up from people basically saying, stop calling us naive and inexperienced. We are seeing what we are seeing and we are seeing the consequences of the decisions that you're not taking now. I think that, you know, that, that those voices are not going to go away. Those voices are going to get more and more powerful. And those kids that are st striking at school are two, three years out from the workplace. And they're five years out from their first management positions and they're 10 years out from being general managers. Now, the challenge is, is this all still too screwed by that point to do anything about it? But, um, but you know, that, that change is coming and there's nothing that is going to happen to stop it, really. Um, so then the question for the organizations of today is, do we want to stick our heads in, our, in the stand and pretend that's not happening? Or do we want to try and embrace it and uh, 
and change our cultures to take those things and to, to to, into account and I suspect that the organizations that are still around in 50 years time if there's still a planet around in 50 years time are going to be the ones who have really understood that and embraced it brilliant thanks very much